Whether you're a seasoned chef or just starting your culinary journey, Cooley Region Cooks is your new podcast resource. Discover new techniques. Hear from local culinary heroes who are mastering the art of the kitchen. Join us every Thursday morning at 10 on WIZM. Stream your favorite cooking tips, local chef interviews, and mouth-watering recipes on the WIZM app. Or find us on your favorite podcast platform. Stay updated and engaged by following us on Facebook. Just search Cooley Region Cooks today. looking forward to Friday. Well, you got it. Yeah, yeah. A little bit colder today, but then up in the 50s by next week again. That's what that we're looking at. I, I woke up and I'm like, ooh, it's kind of chilly in here because I turned the heat way, way down and uh, 22 or something like that this morning. But then I look ahead and I'm like, is that 50 something next week? It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 So we'll deal. It'll be fine. It's National Friday Fish Fry Day. Oh, all the Friday vibes, huh? Because it's just the beginning of Lent. Yeah, so the first wow. Friday after Lent is National Friday Fish ah. Fry Day. Obviously, here in the Midwest, it's every almost Friday. always <laughs> every Friday. But uh, it's an official thing. Plus, it's ah. National Tartar Sauce Day because of the fish fry. you got to have that tartar on the side. That do can you, make a breaker fish, how do you too, do by the, the way. How do you do the tartar? Oh, the, yeah, the tartar can it can really make a huge difference. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bad, so, bad tartar is bad tartar. I, I, what I've done recently in the last couple of years is I, if I have a side cup of the tartar. Yes, from a, from a place, you mean? Right, if I yeah, go out for yeah, a Friday fish yeah. fry and I have the tartar on the side, what I will do is I will dunk the fork in the tartar first. Give it a try. No, no, no. And then I will grab a piece of fish with that, and then uh, I will put it as okay. opposed to, like, putting the tartar on so- on top of the fish, like a sauce. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, or that. trying to dunk the fish into the saw- uh, the tartar because then it breaks apart and you've got, like, a bunch of fish pieces in your tartar sauce. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I bring the tartar to the fish rather than the fish to the tartar. I also am a, a, a big advocate. I, got, I like lemon. I like the squeeze a of the squeezy, yep. squeezy of the lemon. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah on the fish fry. Ooh, there's that a good salad, idea. That salad me. bar better hit right because if it doesn't, then we're going to have problems. It doesn't matter how good the fish is. If the salad bar ain't on point, then we're going to have an issue. Well, and you know what? I, I, We don't buy, like, French or, you know, that whatever that dressing is. <laughs> And but I will almost always have it when I'm out because it's like it is oh, a salad. Dressing, bar. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. salad bar thing. I usually go either ranch or blue yeah, cheese. It's, uh, it's one of those. It's like that. It, or if they've got the bacon one, like oh, the hot bacon yeah, one. Oh yeah. yeah oh yeah. Uh, all right, we'll get to Shaw. We got bad news, happy music coming up later on. Doc's going to join us to talk racing. Woo-hoo, Obviously, Doc. big big weekend uh, for for NASCAR as it kicks off its regular season with the Daytona 500. Also got some disturbed. And all sorts of other tunes. If you need something, get in touch with us, rockmornings.com. More of your rock mornings coming up in just a bit. Scott Robert Shaw in the newsroom. Not sure if you heard, but it's National Friday Fish Fry Day. Hmm. I might have to do that. It's the Friday after Lent, and that's when everybody's got to eat fish, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to meat. Mm-hmm. On Fridays during Lent, yep. If you're a practicing Catholic. Correct. So... In honor of that, they made it a national holiday, but obviously it's kind of a every Friday thing here in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. To go along with the National Friday Fish Fry Day, it's also National Tartar Sauce Day. Well, that's a nice pairing. I was telling Gene that I have uh, been going tartar sauce to fish rather than fish to tartar sauce. You don't dunk? 
No, because I find that the fish will break apart inside the tartar sauce. Mm -hmm. And so I take a little bit on my fork and then I go to the fish and then I eat it that way. Okay. Does that work for you? Yeah. Okay. I've seen people pour it on top of the fish. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I enjoy that. I'd rather, you know, because I don't know if I always want to have tartar with the fish. You know what I mean? Sometimes I want to go maybe just like Gene said, a little lemon. Squirt lemon, yeah. Yeah. But as I mentioned, uh, if you're going to a supper club for Friday night fish fry, that salad bar better be on point. Because if it's not, it could really mess up the rest it's of the key part of the experience, oh. yeah. Dude, there's a place we go to in Iron River, and they have, it's a very small salad bar, but boy, do they just, they do a number on that thing. Mm. Not only do they have all the stuff for an actual salad, you know, cucumbers and tomatoes and sure. all that stuff, they've got nine different pasta oh, salads man. nine that is your jam dude i had so many pasta <laughs> salads i was the and like we got there early so i had the first dibs on it you know what i mean i'm up there just scooping macaroni and all sorts of other crazy stuff onto my plate there was no room for lettuce <laughs> not a single leaf of lettuce hit my plate dude i wasn't having it you put all them carbs and noodles in front of me it's it's go time. Now, you don't always get a salad bar with a fish fry. I know, it's I know. A it's a coleslaw. Kind of a bummer. Coleslaw yeah. mm-hmm. and a roll. Which it, has a place, you know. It better be the mayonnaise coleslaw. I'm not a vinegar You're guy. You're not going the vinegar oil? Nah, I mean, I'll eat it if I have to, but I, I, given the choice, I will always take the mayo over the vinegar. I pass on the whole slaw. Yeah. Pass, pass, hard pass. Hard pass on slaw. Hard slaw-y. pass. Mm. How does it feel to be... Hard pass. An alien from outer space who doesn't understand life on this planet. Uh, hard pass, especially with the fish fry. Like, maybe I could do it with other things, maybe like a barbecue or something, but I'm not. it just doesn't. Mm-mm, mm-mm, huh. mm-mm. Yeah, I like a good coleslaw now yeah. and again. Hell yeah. No, no, no. But fish fry day. All right. Yeah. There's, there's the plans. So if you're looking for an excuse to go out and drink some brandy old fashions and have some fish fry tonight, there you go. It's National Friday Fish Friday. You might have to stand in line, but hey, you know. Oh, man. So many <laughs> lines. Especially here in town in Lacrosse because the dart tournament's happening at the center. Oh, is that going on this weekend? Yeah, so don't be surprised. You see a so bunch, downtown's of, gonna be crazy. bunch of dudes and, and gals with matching shirts drinking mm-hmm. at 7 a.m., yes. by the way. Not NASCAR. It's Wemo. Yeah, right. boy. No, I think it's the Stansfield. Oh, is it okay? Yeah. Well. Same thing. Shaw in the newsroom, what's going on? Uh, A verdict is expected today in Donald Trump's New York civil fraud trial, adding to a monumental week on the former president's legal calendar. Trump could be on the hook for hundreds of millions of dollars in penalties and other sanctions for allegedly inflating his wealth on financial statements that were given to banks, insurers, and others to make deals and secure loans. The case, brought by New York's attorney general, cuts to the heart of Trump's image as a savvy billionaire businessman and threatens to upend the real estate empire that vaulted him to fame and the White House. Trump has denied wrongdoing, and his lawyers have said they will appeal if the judge rules against him. La Crosse County is moving ahead with a civilian review board to look at law enforcement activity within the county. The county board approved the idea last night on a fairly close vote. On a vote of 15 to 10, the passage. The concept of a citizen panel to monitor local police work was proposed after two years of discussion by a special county committee. Supervisor Kim Cable says this review board would not have any power to overrule city or town governments. Because this review board doesn't have any oversight of um, disciplinary action, personnel issues, anything like that, we aren't trying to step in and take over... Um, law enforcement agencies or police departments. A recent local opinion poll showed about 70% of those surveyed opposed the creation of such a review board. Businessman Eric Hovde reportedly will launch another campaign in Wisconsin for the U.S. Senate next week. A spokesman for the 59-year-old Hovde says months of preparation have gone into the campaign. Hovde ran for an open seat in the 2012 Senate race, losing the Republican primary to Tommy Thompson. Democrat Tammy Hi. Baldwin was elected to the Senate that fall. Hi, everybody. I'm Tommy. I'm Tommy. Uh, Hovde he has been appearing at Republican events around the state, including a January campaign rally for Congressman Derek Van Orden in La Crosse. Alternate side parking in Onalaska may be done for the winter. Because of the unusually warm weather and the lack of snow, the city of Onalaska is pausing its enforcement of the odd-even parking rules for the rest of the season, which would normally last until March 15th. The parking rules could be reinstated for 48 hours if there is a snowfall of two inches or more. And she needed just eight points 
points heading into last night's game to become the all-time women's basketball scoring leader. She got 49 points oh, along with up. 13 assists and 5 rebounds. Caitlin Clark broke the record just 2 minutes and 12 seconds into the game when she hit a long 3-point shot from near the logo that swished. The 49 points is Did her career play- high oh, and an Iowa record. Did the play- Oh, it went nuts. And it was funny because leading up to the game, I don't know if you saw her comment. She's like, I hope we don't take a timeout right. to don't celebrate waste this. A time out on I don't this, want to right. waste a timeout on this. They actually did the celebration after the game as opposed to. Yeah. And it was really cool because, uh, you know, the coach kept her in there. She had to play defense. And, of course, the crowd's going nuts. But then after the game's over, uh, the teammates all carried her off. And she stuck around and signed a bunch of stuff and took pictures with a ton of people. Um, she's born and raised in Iowa, played for high, you know, high school ball there. Didn't want to go anywhere else. I mean, it t- you know, it's just unbelievable story yeah, about uh, sure a gal is. from Iowa. Really cool show. She's captivated the whole country. There's no question about that. Yeah, and she's gonna she's going after uh, Pete Pist- is right. P- Pistol Pete yeah. next. I mean, his uh, she's like 120 some points away, and she has what four or five games left. So and it's possible. She's obviously lighting it up with 49 points. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, maybe that's not her average output, but still, she could catch Pete Maravich and be the all time D one scoring amazing. leader, men and women. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. It really is. And they won the game, by the way. That The most important part, obviously, is that, yes, they did win the game. Three-way with Shaw in the newsroom. We'll get back to him for more of those a bit later on, plus bad news, happy music. Right now, it's Bad Omens, the death of peace of mind. Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. Rock Mornings. On air. <laughs> online. On the app. Disturbed. Down with the sickness. Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. Got a text from Brandon. Said, glad Gene decided to stop playing hooky. And I said... She's been in most of the week. I mean, you were off on Monday and Tuesday. She's been here every other day since. He said, guess I haven't paid that close of attention. Well, that's okay. I guess and, not. Uh, yeah. I didn't, uh, Brandon, was it? Yeah. Brandon, I would have rather been here. <laughs> than at your house? Well, I I was sick, man. Yeah. I, it was not fun. Uh, also got a text from Chad who said, good morning, guys. TGIF, could you play some Pantera? Cemetery Gates. Yes, I can, and I will. Get in touch with us. Visit rockmornings.com. You can text us, email us. You can listen live right there, rockmornings.com. Obviously, the big story in the world of sports is Caitlin Clark. Caitlin, here comes Clark. How will she go for history? There it is! From the logo, the all-time leading scorer in women's college basketball. If you didn't get a chance to watch any of it, I urge you to go online and check out some of the highlights. Obviously, the game itself was great, but afterwards, sticking around and signing autographs and taking pictures and, you know, man of the people kind of stuff. Uh, really cool move by Caitlin Clark. Awesome. That's great. 49 points last night. That's Number four, Iowa beating unranked Woo. Michigan 106-89. Finally setting that record for the NCAA D1 women's basketball all-time scoring, uh, scoring leader, and she's chasing down Pete Maravich and, and the men. She might get him, too. This year, she also, by the way, uh, scored the most points in Iowa history, beating Megan Gustafson's school record of 48. So she's just unbelievable. Caitlin Clark. Bucks lost to the Grizzlies last night, 113-110. That is their final game of the first half of the regular season. Now that the NBA All-Star break is this weekend, they're off until next Friday for the NBA All-Star break. Sounds like a personal dispute between several people is what caused the gunfire at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade. And they're apparently juveniles. And they're just getting in arguments and shooting up the joint. I know. I heard about that. And I was thinking about that last night when I was getting ready for a bit. I mean, we're talking about, you know, under under, under adults, right, with access to guns and then and and a dispute and then going someplace like that and taking it out. it's 22 crazy. people ages 8 yeah. to 14 wounded by gunfire, said the Kansas City Police Chief Stacy Graves at a news conference. About half of the victims are under the age of 16. Officers detained three juveniles but released one who they determined was not involved. So, again, we've got uh, two juveniles in custody that are allegedly a part of this whole shooting. 
Speaking of the NBA All-Star break, it starts tonight on ESPN with the All-Star Celebrity Game at 6 p.m. The NBA Rising Stars game will be on TNT tonight at 8 p.m. Tomorrow, the NBA All-Star Saturday night skills competition includes the three-point contest, the dunk contest, yada, yada, yada. That'll be on TNT at 7 p.m. And then on Sunday, you've got the G League up next game on NBA TV at 1230. And then the actual NBA All-Star game will be at 730 on TNT on Sunday night. Badgers play tomorrow against unranked Iowa. That's a 115 tip on the Big Ten Network. And Connor Bernard is back with the Blackhawks after breaking his jaw just a couple of weeks ago. He's already back. Well, and when you're young, your body heals up a little faster than when you're in your 30s and 40s, right, Gene? Ouch, ouch, broke his jaw. Yeah, returning to the Blackhawks lineup uh, against the Penguins last night, the return much earlier than expected, fractured his jaw six weeks ago. The Blackhawks had initially penciled him in for next week uh, to return to the ice, but, uh, yeah, he's uh, already back. Hockey tough, man. Whole different breed of human beings, those hockey players. Oof. Going to get to that requested Pantera for Chad in a couple of minutes. Again, get in touch with us by visiting rockmornings.com. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. If you're running your business, maybe a nonprofit, you probably have a website, and it probably has issues, small to big problems you don't have time for. WebSticks is a company with over 20 years creating and fixing thousands of websites. You only pay for the help you need. Have a little issue? Buy a few blocks of time. They never expire. It's kind of brilliant. That's why we bought the company. Go to MidwestFamilyLacrosse.com, a Midwest family company. Stunning sites, more clicks, web support from WebSticks. Rock Mornings with Brian Jean and Scott Robert Shaw in the newsroom. That is, of course, Pantera with Cemetery Gates. Requested tunage. If you want to request a song, get in touch with us by visiting rockmornings.com. Just got a text from Westy. Wanted to hear some poison. <laughs> Twist my arm on a Friday. <laughs> NBA All-Star Weekend kicks off tonight with the uh, Celebrity Game on TNT. Any idea who the celebrities are? No clue. No? Me neither. Uh, Also on television tonight, a whole bunch of series and season premieres. On CBS, you've got the seventh season premiere of SWAT, followed by the second season premiere of Fire Country. Over on the CW, you've got a couple of series, new series. One of them is called uh, Totally Funny Kids, and that's followed by Totally Funny Animals. So it's America's Funniest Home Videos, (laughs) but with kids and animals. Uh, Also on CBS tonight, the 14th season premiere of Blue Bloods. The All-Star Saturday night for the NBA All-Star weekend is tomorrow night on TNT. Skills competition, three-point competition. Isn't Mm -hmm. Steph Curry going up against uh, a WNBA player? Oh, I don't know. I haven't. I have not followed it. To be okay. honest, okay. I thought that's what I saw. I thought Steph Curry. That'd be cool. Just him and her facing off, and then of course there is the. Um, is our stuff not working? Is this thing shutting off? Hello. Uh, hello. No, I hear you. I'm the the music in the background. Yeah. Some something, something's going on. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Things are breaking. <laughs> uh, Sabrina Lo. I don't know how to say her last. I ask you. Yeah, to face off in a three-point contest during yeah. this NBA All-Star Weekend, yes. Against Steph Curry? Okay, yes. that's yes. what I thought. Get yeah. Caitlin Clark out there. <laughs> um, and then, of course, you've got uh, the, the dunk contest. That's on... fun, isn't it? Yeah, I, the, it can be. I, you know, they've been doing it for so many years, it's like jumping over cars. Yeah, I was going to say cars. And... Watching guys like Spud Webb is what I'll always remember. You know what I mean? Like the five, five foot six and you can slam it and right. win a contest. Or Neek, you know what I mean? Or, yeah. or Jordan, Jordan in his prime, obviously. The windmills and all. I'm not Vince saying they sure. good, but just uh, yeah, it feels like it's already kind of all been done. Uh, the Daytona 500 is on Fox on Sunday and that's a 1.30 start. The All-Star Game is on Sunday night on TNT. Uh, American Idol season 22 premieres on Sunday night on ABC. You've got the fourth season premiere of The Equalizer on CBS on Sunday night. Uh, let's see, what else? Ooh, season four finale of True Detective is on Sunday on HBO. Mm, I haven't seen that series yet, but want to. We don't have Max, yeah, but we don't either. we've got gray area streaming uh, stuff, so I'll probably try to watch it there. Uh, also, the 11th season premiere of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver is on HBO on Sunday night. And the only uh, late night show tonight that's new is Fallon. He's got J Lo and Alan Richson as his guests. But that's what's on TV this weekend. Scott Robert Shaw, 
In the newsroom for a three-way, what's the latest? A special lacrosse county committee will be formed to look into citizen concerns about law enforcement. By a vote of 15 to 10 yesterday, the county board approved a plan for a civilian review board to study how local police agencies work. Among the critics of the idea, Supervisor David Hunt argued that some communities around the county were not included in the planning process. Bangor with Salem and Holman were totally left out of this whole process. When I went to the chief in West Salem... He had no idea what we were talking about. I mean, he knows that they're trying to form this committee, but he has no clue as to what's going on. The board is being formed for a two-year trial period. A special county committee had proposed a review board idea after two years of research. Supporters of the plan say the board would look into citizen comments and would not have any power to overrule decisions made by leaders of individual communities. The concept, however, of a police review board doesn't seem to be very popular with local voters. One area's survey on the issue showed 70% are against having a committee to keep an eye on police. Lacrosse political scientist Joe Heim agrees with that group. I'm amongst the 70% that think that we don't really need this. I, I think the police forces and the sheriff's the department and La Crosse are uh, are more than adequately co- covered and protected. Sure. Heim says that public criticism of police activity may be a key reason why cities are having a hard time recruiting new police officers. A 72-year-old woman from La Crosse is being charged with possessing meth after being stopped for driving erratically on French Island. Geraldine Murphy was pulled over early yesterday and an officer found that La Crosse County had issued a warrant for Murphy's arrest. When the driver was taken to jail and searched, a jailer found a small bag hidden in her clothes. The drug test confirmed that the bag contained meth. Murphy said the bag belonged to a previous passenger in her car. She faces three and a half years in prison if she's convicted of drug possession. It may have been overshadowed by Caitlin Clark's record-setting night, but on Alaska native Lexi Donarski had a team-high 20 points in leading the North Carolina women's basketball team to a 75-62 win over Pitt last night. Donarski was 6 of 14 from beyond the arc and had no turnovers in 39 minutes. She played all 45 minutes in back-to-back overtime games heading into the matchup. This win snapped a Tar Heels four-game losing streak. It's the third time this season that Donarski has scored 20 or more points. <laughs> Three-way with Shaw in the newsroom, and uh, boy, Chad said, thank you so much for playing my Pantera. That's how you start a Friday. I agree. Uh, also got uh, another text, said the app is all messed up. Uh, we've already told the, <laughs> the engineers, trust me, they're well, they got a lot of stuff on their plate right now. Uh, also, James, uh, or Jamie said, trolling my wife this morning for our what? upcoming 18th wedding anniversary. Can I get Buck Cherry's crazy bitch? <laughs> and I said, we literally just played we that like a half hour ago. Did. Yeah. Oh, that's how the sto- show started Apparently, this morning. Jamie was at the gym. So sorry, bud. Oh, man. Sorry. You'll have to just uh, maybe go to her work with a boom box like uh, Lane Myers. Not Lane Myers. What was, in, his, uh, what was his name in uh, Say Anything? Say Anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What and stand outside of her window. Lane Myers was in, um, was that in? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, anyways, you know who I'm talking about. John Cusack. And, and yes. Yeah, and just play it outside her window at work, and, and it'll be hilarious. That won't be weird at all. It'll, it'll go over really sing well. Sing it to her, yeah. It'll go over really well, Shaw. Yeah, you could sing it to her. You could do that, too. Mm-hmm. Get in touch with us. Visit rockmornings.com. We'll talk racing with Doc a bit later. Bad news, happy music. How is it shaping up so far? Uh, well, a uh, Florida man carjacked his own grandmother. <laughs> Oh, no, he did <laughs> All right, more on that a bit later on. Rock Mornings, only on 95.7 The Rock. Incubus would drive Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. Building is falling apart. <laughs> it's a Friday. All I know is I'm out of here by 10 a.m. I don't give a rat's ass what else is happening. This place could be burning to the ground, and I'm gone. I am not going to be in this building after 10 a.m. this morning. Friday, Friday. Uh, Jamie, who wanted the crazy bitch for his wife yeah. as they get ready to celebrate their 18th anniversary, said, we poke fun and laugh at ourselves a lot. Well, yeah, if you're going to be requesting the song Crazy Bitch for your wife on your 18th anniversary on the radio, then, Yeah. And now he wants to hear saliva always. Ugh. Gross. <laughs> Talking about opposite sides of the coin on that one. Totally. Go from crazy bitch to saliva always. I've got some people that I'm friends with on Facebook. 
I don't want to. If you know who they are, you'll know the story I'm about to tell. But they, when they party, and it's not like every day or whatever, but, and one of them ends up getting sick from partying a little bit too much, they like take pictures of each other and post them on Facebook to embarrass each other. <laughs> and they're adults. <laughs> And well, I would imagine they're adults. You said they're married, right? Right, but it's just, I mean, like, they're not in their 20s. Tw- I mean, they're older adults, and I don't know, like, what the sitch is here, but my wife would not be cool with me, po- like, and not that we we don't, and look, I've woken up with a hangover before. It's not that I, I haven't had a headache and some nausea or whatever, but, you know, when you're hugging the toilet and you're, you know, oh, making yeah, a call on the big white the phone, that fun. is not when your wife wants you putting pictures of her on the internet. No. No. Oh, absolutely. Mm-mm. And I've no. got a couple that I'm friends with on Facebook, and they do that stuff all the time. Oh, it's yeah. very interesting. Having words, lots of words. <laughs> Everybody's relationship is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get to Bush in a couple of minutes. Again, Doc will join us to talk racing later on. Bad news, happy music. It's a Friday, baby. Let's do it. Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. Rock Mornings. Monday to Friday, 6 to 9. Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. If I were if I were to say to you, okay. What would Brian do if he found a bag with $30,000 in it on a train? Uh, hide it in your carry-on. You wouldn't think that I would try to track down the owner of the bag and give them their money back. No, I do not think that. Then you would be correct, because that is not something I would do. That is tomfoolery, in my opinion. I live by the simple rule, finders, keepers, losers, weepers. That's how I live my life day to day, every minute to minute, every second to second. If you leave something out on the free table in this building and then you get mad because somebody actually took it that's your fault well, don't leave it on the free table the free everybody table. knows there's different rules for the free table what would i do Same. if i found thirty thousand? Oh, i know exactly what you do you'd alert the police you'd go and have a prayer about it you'd light a candle you'd Stop. call your mother ask her what she would do no i'd find you who, who's carrying around thirty thousand in cash either a drug dealer or an old person's all of their money that's who's got thirty thousand in cash A pair of workers for New York's Metropolitan Transportation Authority are being praised for reuniting a traveler with a lost bag containing $30,000 in cash. She's traveling with $30,000 in cash. Number one, that's your first mistake. That is a bad mistake. Traveler's checks. I don't. ATM card. I mean, it's 2024 now, bitches. Let's get with the times. You shouldn't have that much cash. You're going to get robbed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) Assistant conductor Christopher no- Nacito uh, said he found the bag left behind on a Long Island Railroad train. MTA workers soon discovered the bag was full of cash. He said, I was told there was about 30 grand in it. I didn't actually count it. Detective Kristen Riker with the MTA police took the task of trying to find the owner. Said she was looking through the bag. To see if there was a receipt, a name. They did leave a planner in the bag, and I saw this person had an appointment to get their car inspected, so I ended up contacting the mechanic, sent the mechanic a picture of the person, asking if he could help me identify who the person was. That got the ball rolling to get contact, the lost in, yada, yada, yada. Okay. The the owner ended up with the bag bag. I was looking through the bag to see if there was a receipt, a name. They did leave a date book, a planner in the bag, and I saw that this person had an appointment to get their car inspected. So I ended up contacting their mechanic, and I actually sent their mechanic a picture of this person. He helped me identify who it was, and then, you know, I got the ball rolling to contact Long Island River, lost and found, and, and reach out to this person so they could get their bag. A planner and $30,000. That's what I put in this bag. That person would never get their money back if I found that bag. <laughs> Ever. I'm not saying I would aggressively steal it from them or that I would beat them up and take it, but if you leave a bag with 30 grand on a train, that's on you, brah. <laughs> I'm not responsible for your lost money. And I would feel the same way if it was me. You can put me in that guy's shoes. If I was stupid enough to carry around 30 grand and then forget it on a train, that's on me for having it get taken by somebody else. 
Really? Would you oh, take like, would you keep like all of it. five and all give 25 back? Nope, all of it. All, I just why would you even get, why would you give it back? You, if you keep some of it, then they're going to know you kept some of it. If you're going to give it back, you might as well keep all of it. I can't believe somebody's traveling around with that kind of cash. Wow. Oof. Whatever they do for a living or whatever they got going on this weekend, you know, maybe they're going down to Atlantic well, City, sure. do some gambling. I, know, I, I don't understand. know. Maybe they came here and this is like some sort of life savings and they've got to make it work while they're here and all of that. But wow. 30 grand in a bag on a train and you just leave it there. <laughs> you have to get you really dis- distracted. You deserve to not get you your money back. You have to get really distracted to leave that well, bag. Have you ever been on a, yeah, I mean, yeah. On a subway I, in, in a busy city? But like that. That's it's crazy, right? The only bag I'm leaving with, oh, right? That bag is in my pants. <laughs> it's not like I'm not holding it. I'm not putting it in a backpack. I'm putting it in my it's pants. It's shaped to your yes. chest. Yeah, like with those people that go through the <laughs> yes. airport. Yeah, that's me. That dude deserves to lose his 30 grand for leaving it on the train. Papa Roach and Jackal coming up in a bit. We'll talk to Scott Robert Shaw in the newsroom as well. Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. If you're running your business, maybe a nonprofit, you probably have a website, and it probably has issues, small to big problems you don't have time for. WebSticks is a company with over 20 years creating and fixing thousands of websites. You only pay for the help you need. Have a little issue? Buy a few blocks of time. They never expire. It's kind of brilliant. That's why we bought the company. Go to MidwestFamilyLacrosse.com, a Midwest family company. Stunning sites, more clicks, web support from WebSticks. Shaw, somebody leaves a bag on a busy New York train with $30,000 in it, mm-hmm. and you find it. Yeah. What do you do? I guess I would go to the police. Man, I'm glad that I'm me, because you people are skewing the average here, man. Why? What are you doing with it? I'm keeping it. You're keeping it? Hell yeah, I am. <laughs> I just found a bag with $30,000 in it on a train. Uh-huh. Are you kidding it's the me? the luckiest day ever? Hell yeah. Spooky spins all weekend, baby. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Massages while I'm playing spooky spins. <laughs> All of my dreams are coming true. Baskets of bacon just coming around on a train, just like at that restaurant in the Dells, Buffalo Phil's, <laughs> with the train that brings your food to you. bacon train. Boop, yes. Boop, boop. All aboard All the bacon that. train. All of that. You Shaw, wouldn't feel I, bad about that? I'm with no, you. Not at all. I mean, obviously, it's somebody's money. Travis, t- I don't care. So, yeah, mine. It's my money now. I found it. Travis says, finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Where's your cutoff for money? Where is the cutoff? Because hmm? if you see $20 on the ground, you're not, like, running to the cops to give them the 20 no, bucks. that's true. Right, sure. No. Is it a, it, it, you know, let's say you find 100 bucks on the ground. A crisp, fresh Hondo, Shaw. On the ground is kind of different. different. yeah. How is it different? It's on the seat on the train. Some doofus left it, just like some idiot downtown forgot it or it fell out of his pocket. Yeah, but is there anything on the bag or in the bag that might tell you who that person is is different than a loose bill on the ground What if the bill has, if found, contact Jessica Johnson, (laughs) 216. Right, a number? Right, yeah. I mean, come on. There's got to be a number that you cut off, right? I don't know if it's a number as much as it's it's the scenario. All right, I'll put it in. I'll put, I'll say one thing to to redeem myself a Uh little bit. If I were to find that at work, right? In the building here where I know people and I got to come back here eventually. So presumably it belongs to a coworker. Yes. Like, we have people that operate the convenience machines here, you know, yeah, the Pepsi yeah, yeah, machine yeah, yeah. and all this other, you know, so. So it could be that you need to But, dude, find- on a train with a bunch of strangers and it's 30 grand in a bag, hell no. You're not getting your money back. <laughs> You're just, you blew away. Well, they did the right thing, Sean. They yeah. found the person. With Let's the say it's a bag with $1,000 in it. Are you returning it? Are you calling the cops? Mr. If it's in a bag, yes. I think that's part of what... Yes. A so purse it's the bag. or a wallet or what a backpack just a or something? I mean, a stray gr- dollar bill. No, but... What about a stray $30,000 bill? <laughs> no. And a rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with a little white residue on it, Sean. Right. I can't believe you people are such do-gooders. I don't know if it's do-gooders. Yes, that's exactly what Somebody's that is. Life may depend on that money. Yeah, mine. <laughs> no, not yours. Bacon, tra- all aboard the bacon train. Yes, yes. You it's only not live necessary. once. How many times do we hear it? You only live once. Live your life. 
Make yourself happy. Don't, you know. I'll, karma, y'all. bitches. Yeah, I've had plenty of it. I've had all the bad karma already. So I can't get, <laughs> can't any, get worse. any worse. All right? I don't get it. I don't get people that would return it. I don't understand. Well, they did, Shaw, and it turned you out. Know, to- here, here's what happens. We had the story earlier this week. The PayPal guy, right? Or what was it? All the, he was the richest man in the world. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. The yeah. mistake in his account, yeah. And then what do they do? They make a donation to it, a charity in this guy's name. Thanks. You messed up. You put all this money in my account, and I saw it, and I didn't take any of it, and then you're going to donate the charity. Thanks, Costanza. <laughs> What good does that do you? I mean, not that it, he, you know, wasn't his in the first place. He's not out anything. No, no, no. I understand that, but he and he didn't do anything. But what I'm saying is that, like, how is that for karma? You're saying he should have gotten a nice big fat reward. Yeah, they had quintillions in there. I mean, right. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Give the break the guy off a couple grand or something. Here's two grand. Thanks. All right, appreciate it. Somebody texted in and said, Brian is just doing a public service of teaching people to value their belongings. <laughs> well, I do say that, if you, Shaw, if you're on a train and you have two bags, one has mm-hmm. your underwear in it and the other one has $30,000 yeah. in it, which one are you leaving the train with? Well, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, obviously, they should have kept a little tighter hold on their money. Yes. Travis says they're all lying. They would keep it, too. <laughs> Not lying, Travis. I tell you, man, that trip to the Maldives on a private plane... Mm. Pay for that with that thirty grand jaw. Mm-hmm. Straight cash, homie. I can't believe you guys. Boggles my mind. Bolt of you in cahoots. Hmm. What do you I think, think if I kept it, I'd always be looking over my shoulder or something, you know? Yeah, I, you? They wouldn't have time to find me, man. <laughs> that money be You're on the gone. Beach. That money be gone in a day. Right. What train? What bag? <laughs> Listen, uh, we have video evidence. I don't know. That ain't me. I've never seen that person before. Mm-hmm. Nope. What about this bacon train that you had made wrapped around the spooky spin machine? I don't know anything about that. Sorry, Ossifer. There's got to be a cutoff in, 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 for amount. Probably. I've never stopped to think about it. But Let's say it's not a bag. Let's say it's an envelope, right? Like a bank envelope. You know, where you get, you know, you go to, through the drive-thru mm-hmm. and they put it in the envelope. Is it a thousand? Yeah, I you, would like to think I'd return that. You guys just don't want to admit. No, I'm trying to decipher what I would do. And So you get off the train, you go over to the MTA people, and you're like, hey, uh-huh. I found this $1,000 on the train. Yes. Yeah, they must have videos. They could tell you who was sitting in that seat. They, yeah. Right? Yes, records and things like that, Shaw, right? <laughs> like it's left there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> uh, Wally Wilbur says, shoot your moral and ethical shot, Simpson. Oh, it's immoral and unethical. (laughs) Brandon says, I'm with you, Brian. Finders, keepers, losers suck. (laughs) Jeez. Paul says, sorry for being late on this message, getting ready, driving to work. He says, I'd keep it too as you were talking about. Oh, okay. So he's, yeah, Paul says he would keep the the money as well. (laughs) Thank you, Paul. Uh, Look, I get it. There's There's probably a lot of people like you and there's probably a lot of people like, I'm just, I'm openly admitting it. I would not care if it was somebody's grandmother. It wouldn't bother you. Not in the least. Hmm. I might feel bad afterwards, but I've already spent the 30 grand. <laughs> so it's too late, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like you say, oh, that was my grandmother's inheritance that no, she gave to me or she I, sold I, she sold her wedding ring to make that, you know, so I could pay my, ba- my you know, my, my dad's like, bail. Aww. Oh, that's terrible. Well, maybe grandma should have kept it a little closer, <laughs> right? Maybe grandma shouldn't have had such a light grip on that bag of $30,000 in cash. Uh, let's see. More text coming in, Shaw. William says, if I took the money, my luck would be that there was a tracking device yeah, and, right. and a TV show would end yep. up watching me to see what I would do with it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's fine. You want to watch? I just told you what I do. Spooky spins, bacon train, <laughs> Maldives, private plane, all that. <laughs> I got no problem spending somebody else's money, Shaw, especially $30,000 of it. That's not even that much. You can't even buy a house for that these days. Right about no. your life savings. Can't, can't, can't. Or a car. you can't buy a car. You can't buy nothing with 30. 30 grand is like nothing. It's like $5 nowadays. It's like millionaires. So no, you got a million. Go. This well, is the justification. You of got a million. Saw. So you got a million bucks. So <laughs> that's not rich anymore. You're not rich at a million. Are you kidding me? Nobody's rich with a million dollars. So 30000 in a bag at a train is basically well like picking spot. up five bucks at the park on the Might ground. Might as well Shaw. be, Shaw. Might as well be. Yep. <laughs> 
It's like an extra fr- uh, an extra chicken nugget. You know what I mean? You get 10 instead of 9, you're going to go back to the counter and say, oh, Mr. McDonald's guy. I owe you one. I owe you one here, sir. I want to make sure that everybody else gets the right amount. I'm a do-gooder. I'm going to meet no. Jesus. There's plenty of nuggets. That's not a problem. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's not plenty of dollars? <laughs> no. Is that your logic now? Yeah. Sure. Your logic is there's plenty of nuggets, so then there's, I yeah. can keep one of them. Well, there, yeah, There's plenty of dollars out there, too. Uh, obviously, this guy got the 19 quadrillion tr- tr- or whatever the hell it was. 30 grand. It's like five bucks. You go get a cup of coffee at Starbucks for that, and, and you still won't get change. They'll hand a little tip jar out like, oh, man, tip me, please. I'm keeping it. Thanks for all your texts, by the way. Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, appreciate that. A lot of people. That's good. Agreeing with me. No big surprise there. Rock Mornings on 95.7. The Rock. Latino Heat. Chica, ¿tú quieres probar a un Latino más? Eddie Guerrero. I lie. I cheat. I steal. Razor Ramon, say hello to the bad guy. The heels, they were always the better character. Always. Way more, way more interesting to me than Dudley Do-Right. Don't get me wrong. Grew up loving Hulk Hogan. But character-wise, the bad guys. Yeah. We're way more interesting. Yeah. And that's why I would not return that money. Well, there's a difference between finding a storyline in more interesting and do doing the right thing in the real world with the real you. Courtney says, I'm not saying I would keep it, but there would be signs. In ground pool, baby. <laughs> Yeah, you got to put a little something extra on that for an in-ground pool, bro. Trust me, I've, I've priced it out. Uh, somebody texted in and said, I need to check out this bacon train now. Well, we'd have to we'd have to we create make it. it. Well, there they got a- that. It's at, what, Buffalo Phil's, right, in the Dells? And they got a train that brings your food around? I brings think. your food from the kitchen out to your yeah, table. Yeah, I'm talking about just like a like one of those model trains that your grandfather had in the basement. Just goes and it just circles you. around me while I'm sitting at the spooky spin machine. Gambling my thirty thousand dollars away, Time for bringing, a bacon break. Yeah, bringing me bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen, but a guy can dream, can he? A guy can dream. Can. Uh, let's see. Caitlin Clark set the record last night. No big surprise there. She got forty nine. Doesn't sure. set it. Crushed it. Yeah, only needed eight. She's going for uh, Pistol Pete next. She could be the all time NCAA scoring champion. She could be numero uno, men and women. 49. She needed eight. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, NBA All-Star Weekend starts tonight. You've got the All-Star Celebrity Game tonight. you got the skills competition tomorrow night, and then the All-Star Game is on Sunday. Bucks lost to the Grizzlies, 113-110. They're off till next Friday for the All-Star break, and uh, the Badgers are at unranked Iowa tomorrow at 115. That game will be on the Big Ten Network. Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred said yesterday that this will be his final term in office, will retire when his term expires in January of 2029. Manfred is 65. He replaced Bud Selig as the commissioner Mm -hmm. back in January of 2015. Said you can only have so much fun in one lifetime. I have been open with the owners about the fact that this is going to be my last term. Mm. Well, yeah, you're going to be 70 by the time it comes to an end. It's time to hang it up, bro. And this is pretty funny. I don't know if you saw this. The Fairley, uh, the Fairley Dickinson men's basketball game against host Long Island University was delayed about 20 minutes because the Fairley Dickinson team was stuck in an elevator at the Steinberg Wellness Center in Brooklyn while going from the court to the locker room before tip-off. <laughs> the elevator broke down with them in it. Ansley Almanor, a junior center for Fairley Dickinson, said that he and a few of his teammates had hopped onto an elevator before the game. Everything seemed normal after they pushed the button to go down a few floors until the elevator suddenly stopped, and then it went dark. He said, quote, the lights went off, and we were just like, oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, this doesn't seem good. 
thankfully they were able to use their cell you know they all have cell phones so they were able to call somebody uh uh, and then they were also able to find the um, alarm button in the thing yeah there's like a emergency button and then the firefighter showed up and got them out of there help oof yeah (laughs) just trying to play basketball we got a game to be at well they're at the game they got a game no I know we got to get on the court Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. we got some audio slave coming up in just a bit. Next hour, we'll talk racing with Doc. Duels were last night, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. We'll find out the results of that and see what's in store for Daytona this Sunday. Also, of course, uh, a Friday edition of Bad News Happy Music a bit later on. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Scott Robert Shaw. And boy, oh boy. Nothing like a little moral dilemma to bring out people in their emails and text messages, Shaw. Everybody weighing in, huh? Uh, The Root Man sent me an email, said, I would be cautious about who is giving you a massage while playing Spooky Spins. (laughs) Maybe we drink at different places, but I wouldn't want a massage from anyone where I drink (laughs) at. You'd be hiring them in. It wouldn't be somebody that's there. I said that would be... They'd come along with. Be a private masseuse. Oh, very private. So private, Shaw. James, listening in Altoona, wanted to hear some Mudvayne. We'll get to that in just a bit. Thank you, James. <laughs> Got a text from someone who said, I need to check out this bacon train now. <laughs> and I said it was just something I dreamt up, you know. It's not a creation. Well, I don't know. He yeah. said, I'm a crafter. Don't tempt me with a new project. <laughs> uh... Paul said, uh, I'm going to be getting a garage and new siding for my house with that 30 grand that he'd keep. I said, uh, I'm going to a beach with a massage. All about that massage, Shaw. Mm -hmm. Chris said, I would definitely find the person who lost the money said no real human ever. (laughs) Not going to lie. They had us in the first half, right, Gene? Mm -hmm. Uh Yeah. A lot of people agree with me. That's fine. You Dudley Do-Rights can do, you know, what it is, and you can sleep better at night. I'll sleep fine. Mm-hmm. I'll just, I'll be sleeping on a bed of $30,000. Yeah, that's what you'll be sleeping on. Uh-huh. <laughs> just like a Breaking Bad shot when they uh-huh. open up that garage, just laying on it. Mm-hmm. Big stacks of cash. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Three-way, what else going on? A garage fire in La Crosse last night also damaged several neighboring homes. That fire broke out just before 7 p.m. in a garage at 1718 Market Street. The detached garage suffered extensive fire damage, and the heat from the fire caused damage to multiple neighboring homes. Investigators are still working to identify the source of that fire. A federal judge has sentenced two senior employees of a Wisconsin corn plant to two years in prison for falsifying records and obstructing an investigation into a fatal corn dust explosion that happened at that plant seven years ago. The judge sentenced Derek Clark, the vice president of Gideon Milling and Sean Mesner, the company's former food safety superintendent, for their convictions on multiple safety, environmental, and fraud charges. The 2017 explosion killed five people at the company's corn mill in Cambria, Wisconsin. Clark was convicted of making false Clean Air Act compliance certifications and lying to investigators. Mesner was found guilty of conspiring to mislead OSHA by lying on sanitation records that tracked cleanings at that plant. A Republican proposal to legalize medical marijuana in Wisconsin is dead. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss said there will be a public hearing to build support for passage next session, but it won't happen until after the Assembly has adjourned for this year. The measure drew opposition from some for being too conservative and severely limiting who could have access to medical marijuana and how it would be distributed. Senate Republicans objected to having state-run dispensaries. Governor Tony Evers had voiced support for legalizing medical marijuana as a step toward full legalization. Caitlin Clark wasted no time, becoming the NCAA women's career scoring leader, taking less than three minutes to score the eight points she needed to break Kelsey Plum's record. And Clark did it with her signature shot, a 35-foot three-pointer that hit nothing but the bottom of the net. And Clark did not let up from there. She finished with a school record, 49 points, tied her career best with nine three-pointers and had 13 assists in Iowa's 106-89 victory over Michigan. Here comes Clark. How will she go for history? From the logo, the all-time leading scorer in women's college basketball. Caitlin Clark now has 3,528 points in her career. Let's hear it one more time for number 22, Caitlin Clark. 
very cool it's just scene. amazing. Not just that she did it, but how she did it, you know? Yeah. Those bombs from way beyond the arc. You uh, watching the game last night, Shaw? Did you get a chance to watch it? Oh, yeah, it? watch the whole thing. Okay, now. good. And uh, what did you say, 100 and something away from? 120 about from Pistol Pete. Pete Maravich's and she's got, scoring what, record. got four or five games left in the season? Yeah, keep in mind, just to be fair, uh, Pete Maravich did that in three years because at the time, freshmen were not allowed to start, right. and the three-point line did not exist then either. Yeah. So his record may be more impressive, but nonetheless. Still. Oh, yeah. There's no asterisk here. I mean, that's just the no, way it was. No, no, no. What a game to be at. Holy cow. Hey, we're going to go see her play up in uh, against Minnesota at the end of the month. Do they count for scoring record? Do they count playoff uh, or, or tournament so. tournament baskets? I, I don't know for sure. I know that in like you know with the NFL and stuff like that, MVP voting and mm-hmm. you know they don't always take into right. account it's usually the just regular season records. Yeah. Yeah. So all right, what get what day is that game on? Uh, the twenty eighth. That's a Wednesday, I think. Okay. Did uh, you figure out your Chicago plans for this weekend? Yeah, we're not going. Did you get them switched for the weekend when they're going to play? Mm, well, we're going to go see them in two weeks when they do uh, perform. Uh, but I had to eat one night of the hotel stay and 25% of my train tickets. So so you were going that down to $30,000 is looking pretty damn good <laughs> right now, isn't it? That's you were going to Chicago to see, a, to see an artist and then they got sick. So yeah, they... somebody in the band got sick, so they had to postpone last minute, which is unfortunate, but... Uh, yeah, we so, should still be able to make it work. A little bit of your, a little bit of your expense for the hotel and the, yeah. and the train, but you're still going. So, like I said, that thirty grand sounds pretty mm-hmm. damn good right about now, Shaw. You <laughs> now wouldn't have to, wouldn't have to worry about eating them tickets. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's okay. I can afford it. I just found thirty thousand dollars mm-hmm. on a train. <laughs> see, not see, not see. I'm Two not words. A, did you try to Two call words. me a Nazi? Two words, Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Two words. When does the good thing happen to you for doing the good thing? When does the return it's like on investment? That. It's not like okay, right, I'm then, sitting here waiting. Right then, what's oh, the point? Karma, God. <laughs> the point? I'm just but sitting you're, here. You're it's the right thing to do. That's but you're preaching that it's karma. So when does well, that? It's just it's and it's the right. So thing So when to does do. it happen though? When does the karma happen? When does the good thing happen to you? What? Someone pays it forward in the line at Starbucks. You get an eight dollar coffee. Thanks. Well, I could have had thirty grand. It's just the right. It's how. It works, right, Shaw? I think so. You people live on yang yang. some planet I'm not on. I don't know what the hell planet you guys are living on, but... Oh, yeah, it's karma. It comes back, and then you can't tell me when it actually happens. Just all the time, right, Shaw? Oh, yeah, Over just your great. whole life. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe all when right. you get to the pearly gates, Brad. There, don't even get me started, man. <laughs> there ain't no saving I don't you now. Want, I, want, I have support right now. I could easily turn that to people who don't support me, okay? So don't get me started. You told, I've told you a story about the priest guy. Mm-hmm. All right? Rock mornings on your rock station. I'll never forget hearing that for the first time. I, there was nothing like that on the radio when that song came out. I mean, the only thing that was even close was like corn or... Close. But it was just, I was like, what the Similar hell is the this? Crazy, man. Mind-blowing. Mudvayne for James and Altoona. He said, bitch, and have a good weekend, everybody. You too, James. Thanks for listening. If you're uh, in the Altoona area and you're listening, you can get in touch with us by visiting rockmornings.com. Emails and text messages just flooding in about this whole money bag thing. Jake and I are sharing videos that we find funny. After earlier this week, I talked about Alley Property Bitch. Yes, the yes, the lady in the in the, the. And he said, "Thank you for telling me about the rhubarb video." And I said, "Right." She <laughs> and he said, "I'm showing it to my mom and my aunts." And then we started sharing back and forth some videos that we also found funny, and uh-huh. I shared the arrest video with the itchy nuts guy classic always a classic oh so funny (laughs) when the cop loses it it's the best part (laughs) i'm gonna consider this well he didn't want to help him out i understand no uh colder today 27 here in lacrosse 10 what it's 10 degrees in eau claire right now currently it's 10 degrees and by the way only getting up to like not even uh in the 20s are they gonna get in the 50s next week too uh high of 48 all right looks like in the area it's like like monday we got about 48 here middle of the week next week all right so chilly 
significantly colder than the last couple days, yes. You still laying low this weekend? Yes. No, Shaw's not going to Chicago now. He's got to eat it. He was supposed to go see Widespread Panic and mm-hmm. somebody got sick. Mm-hmm. All right. I believe there's a dance, a high school dance tonight, and there's people getting ready and prepping for that. What? Like what? a like a winter ball kind of thing. Okay, so yeah. not a, like an like, important one? Yeah. No, nah, it's the throwaway, but <laughs> <laughs> still What's, a what? thing. Is there a theme for a winter ball? No, I think no. Okay. Do they do themes anymore for high school dances? Oh, yeah. Like under Prom? the sea and stuff like that? Prom. Okay, what's... I have no idea. What, are they, what do the millennials do now? That's May. Or, what I do don't they know do, what like, it is going to be yet. TikToks? I don't think they'll... No, it'll be, like probably a, be stuff that's in the closet that they can repurpose and decorate okay. with because nobody's got any money. <laughs> but going out to eat, and I forgot that the... Oh, geez, bad mom. The, well, I didn't know the... the Oh, dart tournament dark. was here, so that might. So have now to... you can't find a restaurant. I I'll... I bet if you had thirty grand, you could get a table. <laughs> Stop it! Slide you a little some some. Hey, yeah, how about They're this one thousand dollar bill? A little earlier is all I'm thinking. <laughs> what now? <laughs> yeah, <they're... laughs> you better go get some breakfast. Get get your dinner. You know those darters start early, man. They're not I messing do. around. No. Some of the most drinkingest people I've ever seen. Dart tournament people, all wearing the same shirt, loud as hell. The funny ones are like the dance teams. Like there was a dance thing down at the center a few months ago, and they don't. I don't. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm almost positive they don't sell alcohol during these dance because they're high school kids. Yeah, yeah. Well, they don't during high school. And, right, and they don't want the like, same with the wrestling. So they don't want the parents yeah, getting all lubed up. Basketball, that, so, any of that. But the parents don't want to sit around and wait because there's hours and long. hours and hours in between matches. And competition, so they come downtown and they get wasted. And we're in the bar, no. and like I'm, and they're all wearing the same shirt. And I'm like, "What the hell is going on? Why are they so loud?" And they're screaming at each other. And there's like one girl, one mom who's like the leader of the pack. Yeah, and she's got to harangue all these women, these drunk women, into like getting out of the. Bar. It's yeah. just, a, it's a sight, man. It's a scene, unbelievable. The only people I think that drink more than like the dance moms and the darter people are the water people. Like, I worked at a bar years ago, and when the water people came into town for a conference, they were just, like, hammering beers. They were buying, like, 18 packs at a time and, like, just putting them on the bar just hammering beers. Oh, they were at a conference. They were out of town. They were traveling. They <laughs> were like, enjoying it. Maybe it was on the docket for the state. Might have been. Yeah, write that one off. Write that one off. It was off. awesome. I I never... It's like, man, <laughs> you guys are really... All in on this thing. More of your rock mornings coming up in just a bit. If you're running your business, maybe a nonprofit, you probably have a website and it probably has issues, small to big problems you don't have time for. WebSticks is a company with over 20 years creating and fixing thousands of websites. You only pay for the help you need. Have a little issue? Buy a few blocks of time. They never expire. It's kind of brilliant. That's why we bought the company. Go to MidwestFamilyLacrosse.com, a Midwest family company. Stunning sites, more clicks, web support from WebSticks. Talk mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. I got a text from my buddy Jeff. Hashtag not Jeff. So did you know in 1996, Happy Gilmore came out on this day? <laughs> did you know that, Shaw? I did. I just heard you say it. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have to watch that. Uh, also, we were talking about early. You weren't part of this, but we were talking about uh, the fact that the dart tournament's in town. Right. And those people drink big time. Anybody who goes downtown this weekend can be in for a rude awakening if no. you're unaware that the dart tournament. And I was saying that... Uh, Having worked in numerous bars over the years, Shaw, uh, some of the groups that tend to drink more than other groups when they're in town for conferences, the water people. So you get water people from all around the state, like the dude who works at the water treatment facility Mm -hmm. in your town or your Mm -hmm. municipality, and they come to a conference, a water conference, and they go ham on the beers, man. They just hammer beers. And I'm thinking maybe they have a little expense report, Shaw. Like, like, hey, I'm out of town for the weekend. I'm staying at a hotel. I've got a little a little bit of money that they're giving state me to funded. spend. State funded. A little <laughs> bit of having some fun with this water thing. I also mentioned that the dance moms, Shaw, because what happens is the center doesn't sell alcohol for these uh, competitions and stuff when there's high school kids, right. right? So these moms and dads and whatever have to go downtown to get lubed up, and they got four hours in between matches, right? So they're <laughs> they're feeling good. And uh, my buddy Mark, who owns a, a, a breakfast joint in town, says the dance moms drink the crap out of some mimosas. Mm-hmm. 
I also had several people reach out to me and say that hockey parents and I uh, also you drink a lot. That, though, I, a... That's yeah, that's a given. <laughs> if you got to be around that smell all the time, well, and that and dedication, those kids, and how just well, do you that know much what... traveling. I don't know. I mean, that sport requires oh. so much. Well, traveling. the cost alone. I mean, because they. First of all, the equipment's expensive. And then on top of that, they outgrow it because they're kids and they're growing. On top of that, it smells like nothing you've ever smelled before. I cannot physically describe to you what hockey gear smells like, Shaw. Do you have an idea of what hockey gear No, none of my kids play hockey. So. Okay. Well, and then, then you have to travel far. And then you, right. To on get your to, dime, and you're with the right. same people all the time, wherever you go. So, yeah, I've seen them. They're in lobbies. They're mm, the ones that oh, are yeah. downstairs when you check into a hotel, and you're not part of that, and they're all <laughs> over the lobby with all of their drinks yeah. and their snacks, and yeah. they're just camped out for the weekend. Yeah. i got another one for the list. Parks and Rec. Park and Rec people? Yeah, Park and Rec uh, employees from around the state of Wisconsin recently gathered in La Crosse for okay. a state convention, you know, yeah, yeah. once a year kind of thing. And from what I understand, they they actually rented out a, a local bar. Uh, they brought in a DJ. They brought in cornhole games. Uh, and <laughs> they partied crap. all night long. They had a bus that took them from their hotel to the smart. bar. That's smart. smart. Very no, smart. it was, yeah. Smart. But yeah. They, uh, they lit it up when they were in town. I told I told Gina, I said, I, I was working at a bar and the, the water guys came in and they were buying... Instead of a round where you, like, buy, you know, like, because it gets out of hand real fast. So you got, like, 12, 15 guys, and they want to buy a round, and, like, some guys are not paying attention. Some guys are waiting for their, you know what I mean? So it's hard to keep Mm -hmm. up. And, you you know, you're trying to give them chips or something, whatever, to, to, you know, to keep it even. And then I said, why don't you just buy an 18-pack? I'll sell you the, And then you guys decide you who get, out. and you pass them out. And that's what they did. And so they were just <laughs> buying 18-packs <laughs> of Bush Lights. And I was like, all right, here we go. Make the bartender's job easier. Yeah, yeah. Good tipper, so I will say that. I, I In all the years that I, I bartended, there's, you know, I never got the $10,000 tip that you hear about, you know, the, the charity mm-hmm. stuff or whatever. Maybe that's my karma, Shaw. But, mm-hmm. um, but those people, when they come in in big groups, they tend to tip really well, so. Again, watch out if you're in lacrosse this weekend because them dark people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else is happening? Uh, we've learned the identity of the man accused of a Wisconsin bar shooting that killed a husband and wife. Oh, yeah. That shooting happened at a sports bar in Elkhorn, Wisconsin, on February 1st, claiming the life of bartender Gina Weingard and her husband Emerson Weingard. A man named Thomas Rout Jr. is being held in the Walworth County Jail on possible charges of first-degree murder, along with robbery and firearm offenses. So far, Rout has not been formally charged Police now say that shooting that left one person dead and nearly two dozen injured after the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade appeared to stem from a dispute between several people. Police said the 22 injured people range in age from 8 to 47, half of them under the age of 16, and the mother of two was killed. Police detained three juveniles but released one who they determined was not involved, leaving two people in custody. Investigators are asking for witnesses and victims to call a dedicated hotline to provide tips. The shooting happened outside the city's historic youth. Union Station, despite the presence of more than 800 police officers. In Russia, there is word that Alexei Navalny, the fiercest foe of Russian President Vladimir Putin, who crusaded against official corruption and staged massive anti-Kremlin protests, has now died in prison. He was 47. The Federal Penitentiary Service said in a statement Navalny felt unwell after a walk and lost consciousness. An ambulance arrived to try to revive him, but he died. A Minnesota school bus driver has been arrested for driving drunk with nearly 50 children Uh. aboard. Deputies in Rush City, Minnesota, responded after learning the bus had gone off the road around 8.15 yesterday morning. The driver of that bus, a 59-year-old woman, was said to be showing signs of impairment. She was arrested on suspicion of DWI and booked into the Chisago County Jail. No one on the bus was injured. The 49 students were picked up by a backup bus that then took them to school. That's the way to start the day, huh, kids? I got punched by a bus driver once. I think I heard that story. Young Chang was the guy's name. Uh huh. Did you deserve it? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got I'm your not, money's worth. I'm it. not out here acting like I'm an angel, man. No, right. I was. I was. I was born bad, man. Uh, I got in a fight on the bus with some kid, and he was trying to intervene. Yeah, and yeah, and I got punched. Okay. Got a text from Earl. So the hockey parents rent out an extra hotel room just for the kids' hockey gear so it doesn't freeze as it's soaked with sweat. The drunk dad's sleep in that room also. Ooh. Oh! Breathing that in all night. Blah, 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 blah. That can't be good for your lungs. Oh. 
Also got a text from Eric in Menominee. Said uh, Menominee is sending 12 out of 14 boys to high school wrestling sectionals tomorrow. Can I hear let the bodies hit the floor for good luck? Good luck. Rock mornings on air, (laughs) online, on the app. Drowning pool for the Menominee boys who are going to wrestle. Most of them. Best of luck. 825-ish on Friday mornings. During NASCAR season, we're joined by the mid-pack legend, Mr. Technicality, Car 54, Billy Doc Niles, a.k.a. Captain Retirement, a.k.a. Hashtag Mr. Fister, a.k.a. Hashtag this guy. Happy, happy, uh, July. <laughs> happy 4th of July. Hashtag this guy. I'm kind of anal. Oh, he's kind of anal. Hashtag this guy. He's got it locked on the rock. He's listening to the doc. <laughs> Hashtag this guy. You're getting a thrill by listening to Bill. Oh, jeez. Hashtag this guy. Whoa, what am I touching here? Whoa, what are you touching here, doc? Hey, what a coincidence. I'm touching a bag with $30,000 in yeah, it. Yeah, oh. that's what you're touching. <laughs> sure, doc. Doc, I know you. You'd give it back. No, I wouldn't. I there's an old joke, and the punchline is that you, you, if you have a conscience about, you know, keeping the money, throw it up in the air. God will grab what he wants. Whatever hits the ground is yours. Is that what he says? Hmm. Yes, oh, okay. That's, a, <laughs> that's the punchline. Some Someday I'll tell you the whole joke. All right. Well, Doc, we had uh, the duels last night and a, a, a pretty significant accident, but Blaney able to walk away from it. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, they got stacked up during that second one, you know, some blocking going on, and... It's basically it was the accordion effect. One guy hits another guy, hits another guy, and turned Byron into Blaney, and Blaney nose first into the wall, and he hit a ton. He hit really hard. I mean, that car was on fire as it came across the track. Blaney, he's going to be sore. There's no doubt about that, but the fact that he got out and walked away, that's a testament to the safety of these cars. So, uh, you know, that years ago, and, and you know, they, they made a very good point about this on the TV last night, that Years ago, something like that, if, if you didn't get significant injuries, the way the old seats were, you'd get some sort of a rib injury from the rib rests. Nowadays, you know, they they got their shoulders hanging out. So that's probably the main concern right there is the shoulders. But still, Blaney able to walk away, and that's probably the important part of that. So you saw qualifying on Wednesday night, and people were worried about the Toyotas, you know, because the fastest Toyota in qualifying qualified 24th. But when they once they got into race trim, Holy cow, were they dominant. They won both races last night when you see uh, Reddick and Bell winning both races. Logano and McDowell showing Ford strength. Doc and Hendrick Motorsports off the front row. <clears throat> they will lead everybody to the green flag for the 500 this weekend. They are at Daytona. It is the famous Daytona 500 uh, tri-oval. 31-degree bank in the turns, 18 in the tri-ovals. Uh, last year, if you remember, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. won this race on overtime. The August race was Chris Busher. Track qualifying record set 210.3 miles an hour in 1987 by Bill Elliott without a restrictor plate. With the restrictor plate, back in 2014, Eric Amalola, 200.2 miles an hour. Now, the fantasy experts did this. I did all this last night before the duels, so uh, yeah, take this with a grain of salt. But at the time, they liked Hamlin, Legano, and Blaney, and no reason not to differentiate from that. Blaney's going to have to come from the back in a backup car, but he's, you know, he's still going to be strong. When I filled my fantasy league out this week, you look at guys, names you don't normally see, but they always show up at a restrictor play track. Wallace, McDowell, LaJoy, Denhouse, always somebody different showing up in that top five or that top ten. Don't sleep on LaJoy. I think he's got a car that can win. VegasInsider.com brings us our odds this week, courtesy of BetGM. That's where they got theirs. This was before the duels last night. Hamlin, Blaney, Kozlowski, and Elliott all at plus 1,100. Logano plus 1,300. Bush at plus 1,400. Remember, folks, the big one can happen anytime and take anybody out. Anybody can win this race. Now, if you're looking for some Wisconsin ties to root for in all three races this weekend, tonight in the truck series, Johnny Sauter and Ty Majeski, both winners of the Oktoberfest 200 right here at Lacrosse. They'll be competing in that race tonight. Tomorrow night, the Xfinity race, look for Wisconsin Sam Meyer to race in that, uh, in that uh, Dale Jr. car. And the only Wisconsin tie you got in the Daytona 500 would be in Menards on the side of Blaney's car on Sunday. So if you're rooting for a sponsor, we got Menards going there. Doc Smoker Calendar, we have two Daytona 500 parties going on this weekend, both from Sunday, obviously. The Eckleberg Family Racing's annual uh, Daytona 500 party to fund the Chloe K. Eckleberg Memorial Scholarship Fund. 
Uh, come on out and watch the Daytona 500. It features a sports bar and grill in West Salem. Free donations will be welcome for unlimited food and beer uh, food and beer during the race. There will be tip boards, silent auctions. Bidding, bidding on the auctions will go from noon till 5. Come out early and port, purchase uh, drivers from the race boards. Also, you have a chance to win Bristol tickets. They got a $10 board for Bristol tickets. That goes until the board is sold. So if they don't sell it this weekend, they'll go into the race season until they sell it out. And that's tickets for the uh, the night race in September for both Cup and Xfinity. And all proceeds do, uh, benefit the Chloe K Memorial Scholarship Fund awarded to students attending university or technical school in the, or the following school year that are involved in the racing community at the Lacrosse Fairgrounds Speedway in Salem. Also happening Sunday afternoon, celebrating 30 years of racing. Modified driver up at Mississippi Thunder Speedway, John Daly. Not that John Daly, not ah, the golfer. Yeah. The actual racer, he even spells his name different. He's uh, he's going to be holding his uh, Daytona 500 chicken queue at Newcomb Valley Inn on Highway 95, just east of Arcadia. Carryouts will be available starting at 11 o'clock at a $10 cost. Mm. Also, there'll be driver boards, silent auction, Chinese raffles, uh, gun raffles and door prizes throughout the race. You know, get there early, get a good seat if you're going to stop there. And man, your chicken queue on a, on a Daytona 500, that is phenomenal. Now, if you race anywhere in the Midwest, if you can hear my voice, you know, Chippewa Valley, Dells Raceway Park, Toma, anywhere, your Mississippi Thunder, go find the Midwest Racing Smokers page on Facebook. Get your party's details on that page, and we'll give it a shout out the Friday before your party. And just remember, folks, during smoker season, Get out and support a local short track team. That is this week's race report. Each and every Friday morning, Doc, joining us for the racing report. Thank you very much, DOC. We'll talk to you again next Friday. Daytona 500 already. I know. And then racing, I mean, yeah, all, it's, it's here. Until it's November. Stopped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nine months of it, man. It's like election season. It lasts forever. We'll get to Bad News, Happy Music in Tim Montana in just a bit. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. A Friday edition. What do we got, Shaw? Yeah, we're loaded today, too. All right, right let's go. Uh, if you get busted for OWI and are ordered to go to listen to a speaker talk about the dangers of drunk driving, you should probably stay sober before attending. Oh, no. But a 41-year-old man in Illinois is facing felony charges after he allegedly showed up drunk to a mandatory DUI impact panel and then attacked a sheriff's deputy. Oh, the man who was attending the panel uh, and apparently had nodded off. A sergeant tried to wake him up, said in order to get credit for this, you have to be awake and alert. Mm -hmm. While he was talking to the guy, he noticed the person's breath smelled of alcohol. The man became increasingly aggressive, shoving the sergeant. When the sergeant tried to take him into custody, the man started to resist arrest, uh, leaving the sergeant with abrasions and bruises. The suspect was ultimately taken into custody and charged Charged with battery on a peace officer uh, and also resisting arrest. I'm not that intoxicated. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Some go all out for Valentine's Day, buying cards, flowers, candy, maybe a dinner out. And then there's this guy. A man in Florida spent <laughs> Valentine's Day in jail yeah. after not only stealing statues from someone's front yard, but giving them to his ex-girlfriend as a Valentine's <laughs> present. Dude, she doesn't want you. 33-year-old Anthony <laughs> Lewis wanted Valentine's Day to be special for his lost love, and they yeah. think this guy may have been trying to make up with his ex. He was apparently riding his bicycle when he stole two crane statues from a woman's front yard. Uh, detectives were able to track the missing statues to Lewis's ex-girlfriend's home. They told her that the statues were stolen. She was mortified and cooperated with deputies. The statues were returned to their rightful owner. And Lewis, who has 39 previous uh, burglary and theft charges, <laughs> oh was arrested. This Going for the record, winning. apparently so. I wonder why she broke up with him. Right. And he thought that getting her some statues <laughs> of, of birds? Yes, cranes. Crane, crane statues? statues. Uh -huh. Was going to fix that? From right. somebody's yard. This I suppose a, a guy who's got 39 previous arrests for stealing... It's Probably got, not clear of thought. It's got one move. It's his go-to move. He takes Is that how he back. wooed her? Is that his woo right, technique? Apparently. And they, they warned, by the way, if this guy's in the area, he'll steal something. Keep an eye on him. So, yeah, all right, it so it's not like just it. statues. Okay, yeah. he'll steal whatever he can get his hands apparently. on. All right. Uh, seeing a sign that advertises ice cold beer doesn't mm. seem wrong, mm -mm. but Tennessee wants to make it taboo. A couple of Republican lawmakers have introduced a bill that would ban the sale of refrigerated or cold beer in Tennessee. Why? What? Uh, they're trying to tackle an important issue. The goal is to curb drunk driving and reduce so, deadly crashes involving alcohol. People are buying the beer, and because it's cold, they're drinking it right away? Yes. 
Uh, it is illegal to drink and drive in Tennessee, but their open container laws do allow those traveling in vehicles to imbibe. What? Yes. So a passenger could just be sitting there shotgunning beers? Yeah, that's yes. true in some states. Yeah. I think Texas as well. Hell uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Like uh, so this bill would ban beer sold at retail locations. So we're assuming that bars, restaurants, and other venues could still mm-hmm. serve cold beer. Some might argue uh, is a bigger contributor to driving under the influence than beer sold at gas stations or grocery stores or breweries. Yeah, but what if I'm putting it in my cooler to go out fishing? I don't want it to be... You'd have I, to put it on ice yourself, apparently. Yeah, but then i got to wait for it to get yeah, cold. Yeah. That's dumb. Mm-hmm. What if I'm going home to restock because there's people over and we're playing cards and we ran out? Right. Now we got to wait for our warm-ass beer to get mm-hmm. cold? I don't like that. That's dumb, Tennessee. Stop. Uh, multiple people in Mesa, Arizona, called 911 the other day to report there were alligators swimming around a lake in a city park. That's worth reporting. Yeah, but... It sounds like a prank, but if anything, the city was pranking them. Turns out the city recently added some realistic foam alligators to that lake <laughs> for birds and turtles to sit on. Turtle. Some 911 callers, though, were convinced they were real. One woman even claimed a gator had latched onto her boyfriend's fishing line. Uh, it doesn't sound like the city plans to remove them anytime soon. They actually doubled down and added two fake hippos. Oh. They're styrofoam hippo heads that float around that looks like they're lurking under the water about to attack. I think there's an alligator inside water areas. It's just like kind of hanging out. There, yeah, there's like three live alligators in here. <laughs> yeah, there's one under the bridge. I think there's either two or three. Right now, I'm looking at one that's just swimming around. It um, actually bit my boyfriend's fishing line and we had to cut sure it. it. Sure it did. That's <laughs> terrifying. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, people! Mm-hmm. It bit my. It did. It. I'm not. I know. I'm serious. <laughs> well, God, maybe it line. got wrapped around something. Right. Right. A 46 year old woman in Florida named Betty Union has uh-huh. been arrested after she smacked her son in the face so hard that his glasses broke and caused cuts mm-hmm. on his face. And she did it because she was upset that he called her quote booger face. Uh-huh. It's unclear if that was a random insult or if she really did have boogers on her face in at the, the time. Face! The age of the child has not been released. The woman is facing a felony child abuse charge ordered to have no contact with the boy. A Florida man is accused of carjacking his 77-year-old grandmother and then writing a four-page letter apologizing oh, for what he did. My. Alan Aspinwall was arrested and charged with carjacking, domestic battery, and theft. Uh, the, he allegedly carjacked his own grandmother. Uh, police responded to a home in Leesburg, Florida, after reports of battery and theft. When they arrived, uh, Aspinwall's grandmother said her grandson had asked her to unlock her car so he could get something from the trunk. As she walked outside to unlock the car, he, he allegedly it. ripped the keys from her hands and oh, pushed boy. her to the ground. After he stole the keys, he got wow. in his grandmother's car and took off. Uh, police found Aspinwall later that day, um, and uh, he ended up writing a letter to his grandmother apologizing uh, for the incident. Mm-hmm. He said, Dear Grandma, mm-hmm. first and foremost, you are the most beloved person in the whole world coming from me and everyone else. I want to apologize for not being the young man you raised. You are my everything. I'm truly sorry for the negative events that has been going on in my life. My mind has been so in the gutter. Thank you for always forgiving me, even if I'm wrong, he said. Uh, this yeah, guy, you are wrong. Yeah, he, they've added a carjacking charge as well as theft oh. and battery. Grandma said she thinks his addiction problems led to the situation. Oh. And call him the Energizer Dummy. A 73-year-old man in Australia was positively shocked to need urgent urethra surgery oh. after jamming three button-style batteries into no. his... No penis. Nope. The nope. unidentified man whose nope. medical anomaly is now the source of Not a medical an study nope. anomaly. Uh, was nope. fueling his own sexual gratification nope. by intentionally shoving batteries into the one-way tunnel. That's not an anomaly. That's... The pa- patient had <laughs> apparently done this before. Yep. Never a problem. They didn't get stuck. Uh, this case, they did, and he waited 24 hours to nope. seek medical attention. Nope. Doctors had to move quickly to remove the foreign objects as their corrosiveness can cause necrosis, the death of body tissue, yeah, yeah. in just a matter of hours. Death of penis. After several unsuccessful attempts, surgeons resorted to forceps, which finally got out, the little buggers. Uh, that wasn't the end of it, though. Ten days later, the man had to go back to the hospital complaining of swelling and uh. icky discharge, uh. prompting doctors to aggressively operate yet again. Nope. This time, they made 
an incision into oh, the skin no. and a large yeah. amount of fluids oh. leaked out. Yeah, why? 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 The doctors feel the man developed an extensive degree of necrosis and part of his urethra had to be removed. Ooh, part of it. Well, it's not the full blown. It's dead. Just it just needed to be abscessed it's and drained. Limping along. It was, yeah, it was, it's not dead. Dead. Did they give it like mouth to mouth resuscitation? Is it CPR, Shaw? What do you do with that thing? Come on, man, you can do it. Dude, every time I come across one of those videos, I just I don't know why. I don't get it. And maybe I'm prudish. I don't know. I don't think I am. But I just see those videos and I'm like, what are you doing, dude? That's an out hole, not an in hole. Mm-hmm. Little tiny batteries, like only. little round ones. Like the kind yeah. you put yeah, in a watch yeah. battery, like a watch like battery. A watch battery. Yeah. Oh. You can't stretch that out like you can with your earlobes, right? With those <laughs> I think you can. I've seen like I said, I've seen some of those and it's not Depends good. Depends on how hard you try, I suppose. I mean they're putting all sorts of stuff in there. And we had the guy that had the didn't he have a iPhone charger cord in there? Remember that guy? Uh, I try to forget. Yeah. That one you gotta really Gotta be dedicated to the lead cause. up in there. This one, I don't get it, dude. When you go to the hospital for surgery, they gotta put your ass under anesthesia to shove that stuff in your pee pee hole. <laughs> and these guys are just doing it at home with batteries and stuff, taking it out of their wife's oh. LED candle on the bottom. <laughs> Why the isn't my <laughs> I need <this>. candle working? <laughs> right, Chuck. Sorry, batteries in my pee hole again. <laughs> we gotta go to the. We yeah. might have to go. I need some help. He does, that guy that's putting that in his pee hole probably doesn't have a wife, is my guess. Guessing you're right. And if he does, she probably doesn't know about this. That seems like Just, a very hidden um, talent. Why my LED candles never <laughs> work around this place, that's all I'm saying. You never find a battery around here. Oh, man. They come with batteries, though, Shaw, but then they go missing. I don't mm-hmm. get it. What is happening in this house? Well, that really started my weekend off on the wrong foot. You're welcome. Oh, it was only half dead. It wasn't I'm, full dead. Right. They revived it. They- well, I'm glad your trip got canceled. You had to eat all that money on those tickets, you son of a bitch. <laughs> this is what you leave me with on yeah, a Friday? Batteries in the pee hole. It's supposed yeah. to. Yeah, thanks. And uh, <laughs> batteries in the pee hole. Yeah. <laughs> it's the name of my new band, Batteries in Your Pee Hole. Rock Mornings. Only on 95.7 The Rock. Got an email from Josh. He knew about the couple I was referring to that post the drunken puke pictures of themselves. Yes. He said, those pictures are priceless. <laughs> yeah. Root man with an email said, I would be cautious about who is giving you a massage while playing spooky spins. Maybe we drink at different places, but I wouldn't want a massage from anyone where I drink at. Well, you're not saying just a random person who's at that location should come If I in. have the $30,000 that I found on the train because some idiot left it there. You're hiring your own personal person. I'm persons. bringing in. Pros. A professional. Pros. Yep. Maybe two of them. That's something I've never had. Like a two person. Have you ever had a forehand massage? You ever heard of these things? Where two people are working on you at the same time? No. Yeah. There's all sorts of other Special massages, but I'm not going to... Yeah, pages of the internet. No, 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 that, that's, that's on the up and up. That one is legit. I mean, there's a non-legit forehand one, but... <laughs> uh, Doug emailed, said, Both my kids played hockey. Starting at young ages, youth associations help with the cost early on. My daughter plays club hockey for UWL. Take on Iowa State this weekend. I love road trips. Great memories. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Uh, a lot of bonding. A lot of time spent in hotel lobbies. Sarah texted in, said $30,000 equals how many little batteries? Ew. Ew. Not many. Those things are expensive. Have they you ever, are. I know. I, so <laughs> I went to a store before Christmas, and I was doing a little Christmas shopping. And at the counter, at the register, they had a screaming goat. And I, you know me. I love screaming goats. I think they're hilarious. And it's a plastic little figurine, and it's a goat, and it's standing on, like, a little bucket or whatever, and you press down on it, and it goes, ah! It screams. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I pressed it, and I was like, I got to have this. This is great. And every t- and so I had it, and I'm walking around my house, and every time I go by it, I press it, and it screams, and I laugh, and whatever. Well, it started to go, and so I had to get new, and there's three of them in there. Mm-hmm. Three it's of like, the little flat like, batteries? It was like 28 bucks. I went to the battery store. Yeah. Got the batteries? Yes. Uh-huh. Works fine. It's good. But yeah. like batteries, oh, yeah. those little ones ain't cheap. No, I know. 
I gotta get one with a cord so I can just plug it in. Thank Candles, you, lights. Use those. Uh, Eric from Menominee, very happy to hear Drowning Pool Bodies. The Menominee Satisfied boys. Satisfied customer. Going wrestling this weekend. A uh, ton of other text messages. I can't read them all today, honestly. We got a, about a bazillion of them. Thank you very much uh, to everybody who texted in and emailed this morning. Find us online at rockmornings.com. You can get our uh, daily podcast on there as well. Take the whole show, condense it down into an hour and some change, and okay. then you can listen to it there. Got it. Rockmornings.com daily podcast. What else? Social. We got a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. We're working on it. All yep. those things, they're coming along. Yeah. All that crap. They're coming along. It's going to be cooler today here, uh, well, all the way through the area, actually, Eau Claire and Menominee and Altoona and wherever you're listening, uh, a cooler day today, but back up near 50 degrees by the middle of next week, so short-lived. Oh, that's so wimpy. Come on. Give it all you got. Go. Ah! That's what I'm talking about.